God spake these words and said, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. God spake these words and said, Thou shalt do no murder. As we get to these two commandments, we have moved past the part in the Ten Commandments that deal with loving God. And we move into the parts that, the, of the Ten Commandments that have to do with loving our neighbor. And the first one we have has to do with loving our neighbor in loving and honoring our father and our mother. Both of these two commandments having to do with honoring father and mother and not doing any murder have to do with life. We receive life from father and mother. <clears throat> the unlawful cessation of life is murder. And so these two commandments have to do with life. Jesus said that he came that we might have life in abundance. St. Paul tells us that this commandment concerning honor father and mother is the first commandment <coughs> with promise. Continuation of life in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, I don't think any of you are going to um, go buy a home in Israel, especially not now. So what is this land in which the Lord God has given you to live? Probably this one. A state... <coughs> community, a nation. You have been given a land to live in. And God wants you to live long and prosper. Right? To quote Dr. Spock. Dr. Spock, by the, by the way, was actually a Jewish gentleman, and so that statement in Star Trek is actually a very Jewish idea. Live long and prosper. It's a blessing. It's a good wish. But it is predicated on, in some way, honoring father and mother. In what ways? Well, we can think of many ways. I'm not going to go into all the details, but there is a distinction in theology between the order of creation and the order of redemption. Just leave it at that, but I'll go on. There are those who have been born before us who have been created before us. And we have been created after other people. Somehow, we've got to get into understanding that this is to be honored and it is to be honored simply by the fact that they were created before us all the way back to Adam and Eve you can get mad at Adam and Eve for eating the apple but you are directed to honor Adam and Eve as your first parents, despite what happened. Simply because they were created before <coughs> you. And so it goes. This has nothing to do with equality before Christ in this sense of being sinners. Adam and Eve are sinners. You and I are sinners. We stand 
equal before the just judgment of the just one. We stand equal before the cross. And God will judge perfectly. But because someone was born before you, it's an older idea, but it's still true. They are to be honored as having gone and come before you. Now, part of the reason I think that we are hesitant to do so is not just our sin nature, but we have been indoctrinated, generally, into a notion that humanity is progressing and getting better. So naturally, those who are created later must know more than the ones who were created before. This is a natural, logical conclusion that comes from the idea that we are progressing as humanity. And we may well be progressing as humanity. That is a possibility, but it is not a foregone conclusion. There is no evidence to this. There is no evidence. Let me give you an example. You say, well, I have a computer. I have a smartphone. I have a technology. What is an indication that your mind is failing? What do you do or what did you used to do with a pad of paper? You used to write down what it was that you might forget. How much do you put into your phone so you don't forget it? Quite a lot of stuff. It's like a, a notepad. So, it is actually possible that we are getting dumber. Our minds are getting more feeble. In fact, there is evidence that earlier civilizations had awesomer minds, more pristine minds, minds that could memorize unbelievably well. Father Hubbard, last night when he finished preaching, I asked him, I said, Father Hubbard, did you memorize that sermon? Fair question. And he answered that he had written down some parts and he had memorized them. Well, let me tell you something. There was a time not so long ago where they would preach often for an hour or more. And the whole sermon was written first, then memorized, then given without any manuscript. An hour long sermon. Standard thing that a minister would do every week. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Their minds may well have been more pristine than ours and they have given to us a goodly heritage of technology and we rely on those things to get through every day. How long do we have to go to school before we learn what other people knew before us so that we can start to make progress? If progress is being made, it is made on the shoulders of giants. So if we are progressing, and that is a possibility, we may be devolving, not evolving, that is a possibility, but if we are progressing, we are progressing because we have people who have gone before us who have given to us lots of knowledge so that we can pro progress 20 or 30 years in our profession until we retire and go play golf, till we retire and our minds become feeble and we start to forget things. So we are to honor those who have been created before us, not because they are better than us, 
in terms of salvation and being worthy of being saved, but because they have gone before us. And if we do not pay attention to what they have handed to us, we will not be able to live as well or as easily because what you learn in school makes it possible for you to earn money and to eat. And bread is life. And life is bread. And so you eat and live easier because you have received thousands of years, we often forget things, but thousands of years of information that is at your fingertips in your phone. So it has to do with life. And of course, murder is not just murder, it's all sorts of hatred of other people who have life. So to dishonor father and mother, and to hate father and mother, according to the teachings of our Lord, is to, in a sense, murder them. In a sense, to choke the life out of those who have gone before us. To extinguish their memory. To act as if they never existed. This, too, is perilous because it means that you may not have information you need in order to live long and prosper in the land that the Lord thy God giveth you, each and every one of you, to live in, wherever that may be. It is perilous. We pray at morning prayer that we as a nation may be guided by our Lord, by the Holy Trinity, by the creator of heaven and earth, into the ways of justice and truth. And we hear a lot about justice today, don't we? A whole lot about justice in society, social justice, justice in society. Well, that's pretty important. Justice is just. And who's the one who's most just? Our Lord. And how do we receive information about justice from our Lord? In the Bible, through the church, who are, by the way, our ancestors in the faith. We receive his word and the testimony of the fathers we honor that. We receive information from the past that tells us what justice really is. So that we can live long in the land that God gave us to live in, as we pray at morning prayer, to guide this nation in the way of justice and truth. It's a perfectly fine thing to pray. Nothing wrong with praying it. If we understand it rightly, as the just one giving us his word through the testimony of the fathers and the life of the church to live long and prosper in this land or any other. And that is not to be strangled or extinguished or silenced through spiritual or intellectual or academic murder. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.